my name is Mert Peckrell, and I'm the inventor of the Fibonacci uh, rotary expander engine. It's been my privilege to work on this project for a really a very oh, concentrated time for the last 10-12 years. There's a lot of history that has gone into this research. I've studied uh, several thousands of patents and designs from the last 200 years on rotary engine devices. I've been very uh, privileged to speak with some very interesting engineering people over the years. Uh, but I would say that of all the comments that I've heard about this technology, one professor said that uh, it is a game changer. Let me explain to you what is going on with the Fibonacci rotary engine. First of all, the name Fibonacci simply is uh, named that because the engine is named that because the term Fibonacci is a mathematical uh, concept from discovered by a mathematician in the 12-1300s. And uh, that ratio of 1 to 1.618 is typically known as the Fibonacci ratio. And we see it not only throughout creation, we see it in the human body. That same design principle has been incorporated uh, into the Fibonacci engine. So that's one thing. Secondly, uh, the Fibonacci engine is a heat engine. That means simply that it converts uh, heat energy into rotary mechanical shaft power. And uh, it does it the most efficient, effective device in terms of energy conversion that has yet been devised. It has the capability not only of a heat engine, but what is termed a thermoelectric generating engine. It can, com it can combine uh, not only as the ability to convert heat to mechanical rotary shaft power, but uses and captures waste energy inside the energy engine, uh, be it from friction or centripetal or centrifugal forces, uh, to in fact generate electricity inside the engine, electromagnetically, electrostatically all of which can be combined together where there are four major forces in the engine combining together to produce massive torque power. But for our purposes today, I'd like to just simply stay with the concept of the engine as a simple rotary steam engine. And again, the history of steam using water, uh, this engine can use water with an open, what's called an open loop system, or it can use a working fluid uh, that's made by several companies now that is in the industry is called organic ranking cycle fluid that goes to vapor phase at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That means that a uh, heat source, be it solar or waste heat, uh, can heat the working fluid, go to vapor phase, run the engine, come back out and be recondensed and recycled. And so that brings us to another point. The source of the heat for the Fibonacci rotary expander engine can be waste heat from a dry cleaning plant or from an oil refinery plant or anywhere there's waste heat or combined and combined with solar heat as well. So it has incredible capabilities. The size of the engine is remarkable. It's a very small engine. If you think of, of uh, engine sizes, it's about take, oh, visualize two one gallon paint cans butt to butt, end to end, and there's your engine. Now, as an engine, as a rotary expander engine, uh, it has a capability of capturing what's referred to as the adiabatic expansion, expansiveness of a vapor. And that's a fancy term to simply say that if you maintain the, a constant temperature and pressure, in theory, uh, with a vapor, you can have an expansiveness to it. It used to be years ago with steam engines, uh, locomotives, that the engineers understood the term of the ex term the expansiveness of steam. Today we sort of lost that concept, but the point being is that as a rotary expander heat engine, uh, this engine is capable of tremendous massive torque at zero RPM with a very small footprint. And the engine uh, in terms of horsepower to weight ratio is a phenomenal thing. Now, let me go further. We have an expander engine, we have a heat engine that's an expander engine, we have a heat engine that's an expander engine based upon a certain mathematical ratio, but has it overcome and does it overcome the historic problems associated with these types of devices? Well, that's the point, it does. And Every, every problem that has been historically associated with rotary 
engines, uh, expander engines, has been solved. You say, well, I've never seen one. That's right, because they haven't been solved until now. And the typical problems are seal versus friction, number one. If you seal a device like this, where you have a sliding vein inside of a, of a, of a rotor vein slot, uh, and you heat that engine up in unequal heating, I might add, you have unequal expansion, coefficient of expansion, hence coefficient of friction issues. So historically, these types of devices have been designed where you have very low efficiency. And the reason you do is because if the vein gets, uh, is made to fit that rotor vein slot at one level, at one size, it gets too tight when the engine heats up or then it gets too sloppy a fit when the engine cools down. And so what was needed was a, among other things, among other key elements of design, was a self-adjusting, self-aligning, self-sealing uh, vein that would work both as a lever, as a vein, as a seal. And that's exactly what we have with the rotary expander engine. It's a very unique uh, uh, vein system that is patent pending is a remarkable system. So that's one key element that's solved is the friction versus sealing issue. Other issues include dampening issues. What that means is if you have an expander engine and you have a gas expanding on say the power side of the engine, what happens on the exhaust side? And how do you release a back pressure? That's, and then how do you release it in a manner so you don't have a vein collapsing in a way that causes a lot of clatter and issues. Well, that's been solved. What about what's called vein tip issues, where you have a, a vein with centripetal and centrifugal forces, and you have a pressure of a gas inside of a rotating chamber that's pressuring against that, that, that vein tip and forcing it away from the housing. You, now you have, and, and the uh, and the end place. Now you have a leak, a serious leak, hence the optimization sealing issues associated with rotary vein devices has been really a problem. And uh, I might say that by, it's just again a remarkable thing to see how the Fibonacci engine has solved that problem. We've I've designed it in a manner that the rotor vein tip issue is solved. We can run the, I can run the engine at a very low RPM, it likes 800 RPM. We can run it up to 10, 15,000 RPM and not have a problem with too much friction with, because due to centrifugal or centripetal forces. That's another aspect of the invention that has been solved. So give us, uh, write us if you would at info. Uh, FibonacciResearch.com. Uh, give me a call, 602-432-0030. Love to talk with you, but put, uh, let me put, if we would, we'd like to put you on our newsletter and uh, send you some more information. Perhaps you have some questions or comments you'd like to ask or share. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for your time, and, uh, and hope you enjoy the video. Take care.